Hey everybody out there, this is Seto Kaiba and today for you guys we are going to be doing a deck profile slash deck update of my Dark Magician deck. Yes guys, the ultimate wizard in terms of attack and defense. So yes, people always ask, why is Seto Kaiba doing a Dark Magician deck profile? Well guys, I love Yu-Gi-Oh! Though I will say Blue Eyes, I feel like personally is my favorite, uh, more so than Dark Magician, but it's iconic, old school Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. I, I love it to death, and I just love Yu-Gi-Oh in general. So, yeah, um, as you guys know, this time around in the year, I usually do deck updates of my Dark Magician and Blue Eyes decks, so stay tuned to that. Uh, but without further ado, guys, let us get into my Dark Magician deck. The deck has gained a lot of support over the past year um, with Red Eyes Dragoon, with different cards coming out. Um, I know some people cannot afford all the cards that I have, my hope is that certain cards do get reprinted in the new year at some point in time, which I think will be very nice for a lot of players out there. But I always love running the original artwork from the anime from with Dark Magician and the Arcana Knight artwork because I think it's so awesome and I always love the artwork in that iconic episodes against Arcana Knight. Arc Yugi and Arcanite and Dark Magician Girl, etc. Uh, so I've always loved that artwork of him. So that's why I run these artworks, if you guys are wondering. But yes, he's very useful in the deck, as you guys know. It's the deck's based around him. Uh, it can have, this deck can go for fusions a lot. It can go for links, uh, but also has a heavy focus to some degree on fusion summoning, which it can fuse into summon uh, into multiple different monsters. So that's your three Dark Magician there, guys. Straightforward there. Not too much to talk about. We also won one Red Eyes Black Dragon. Now people wonder why do you run? Red Eyes Black Dragon. Well, my good sir, there was a little card that came out earlier this year, which is a pretty good card, and that is Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Uh, a combination of this with Dark Magician helps you go into Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. Very easy to abuse this card. You can usually make uh, one to two of these per duel. Some people run three of it because they'll run other substitute targets, but me personally, I just run two. It's very easy to make too. We'll talk about that later on as we get through the deck. But Red Eyes Dark Dragoon in combination with Red Eyes helps go for an iconic card, which it's just so cool that they made a Yugi Joey card, I think. But that's why the Red Eyes is in there if you guys are wondering personally. Um, continuing on uh, what we run in the deck, we also run a couple cards that we can still use in the deck that I find very useful. Uh, Magician of Dark Illusion. Not everybody runs Magician of Dark Illusion still. I personally understand that, but I still like it in the deck. In addition to that, I run Apprentice Illusion Magician as a two of. Um, some people do not like running Apprentice Magician, uh, Illusion Magician at multiples. Um, I've seen different people discuss reasons why. Um, I've seen some people run two of it, one of it, and three of it. Me personally, I'm in the camp of two of because it's a good card, but it's not, you know, the be all end all means to the deck. Uh, back when we would run multiple and were more reliant upon Magician's Navigation, I would say this card was definitely made to help out with the problem if you drew multiple navigations in one turn, uh, you know, in your starting hand. But since we've moved away from that, it's just good. Not amazingly necessary as a three of, I find, in the deck as much anymore. Magician of Dark Illusion is very useful and versatile in a lot of aspects in the deck to help going for level 7s in the deck such as Big Eye, Red Eyes, Flare, Metal Dragon, and in addition to that also helping you go for your Ebonon Illusion which is still a decent card and good card in the deck. So it has a multiple different uses to bring back a Dark Magician. So I like these cards here uh, in the deck. They work out pretty well and I've been perfectly fine with running them personally. Uh, then we have our three magicians rod. Um, rod is essential in this deck. It's your one of your main searchers for the deck to help search out all your dark magician cart spells and traps, um, which is you have a multitude of things you can search out because the majority, I think Konami's made it this way, and even deck building wise, it's worked out. A majority of your deck is going to be spells with a few traps tacked in. So that's really nice and this card can search out just about anything also if you're trying to bait out ash and you have a good hand it's a good ash bait so you can set up for future plays not necessarily what you want to be doing but overall it's very good and your main searcher for your deck pretty straightforward guys for you guys out there so magician's rod uh next we run magician's souls um i believe this card will get reprinted eventually 
And I'm going to be honest with you, when it does get the reprint, I don't think it's going to go down as much as people would hope that it would. But if you have it, you run it. If you don't, you can run substitutes. I've been talking to buddies out there that are like, I don't have Magician Souls. What should I run? I suggest right, maybe you run double navigation instead of the one that I'm running, and then you find other cards in the deck to run, possibly. Maybe you go for more of a fusion element. Maybe you run double navigation, you run triple navigation. There's, there's different cards you can substitute, is what I'm trying to say. And I would suggest the best thing I would do if I didn't have this card and I was thinking about it, and I even did some playtesting online so I could talk about this with you guys, is I would probably run triple navigation or at least double navigation and then I would probably go around the lines of maybe finding some other decent cards to run the deck. Maybe I'm running more of a fusion element of the deck so maybe I want to focus more on the Red Eyes Dragoon so I run some cards that can work with Red Eyes Dragoon a little bit more. Uh, maybe I want to run some other Dark Magician spells and trap cards that are decent but because of space reasons you would, you're not running currently. Maybe you up some ratios of certain cards. Uh, that can be useful, like I was talking about. So, like the Apprentice um, Illusion Magician girl. Uh, maybe you bump this up to three of instead of two of because you don't own this. So, what I'm trying to do here, guys, is give you substitutes if you do not have access to this card. But when it does come out, guys, I'm going to be honest with you, it's probably not going to go down as much as I would like to see people ha you know, go down as much as it should so people have more access to this card because they want to play it, a lot of people do, in just their fun Dark Magician decks. So, just wanted to say that, but if you do have it, you run it, it's an amazing card in this deck. Just just made for this deck so much, and I've always loved it and enjoyed playing with it. Next, we run uh, 3 Keeper of Dragon uh, Magic. Uh, this is a card that a few years ago I was running in this deck, uh, back when we actually had... What's his name come out? Uh, <laughs> Dark Magician of the Dragon Knight. Back when this card came out initially, I was running this package in the deck. So it's back now in 2021 uh, because pretty much, I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's really good to help go for Red Eyes Dragoon because this deck under Master Rule 5 and with the new cards that came out has a heavier focus on fusions because you can go for multiple things, extra deck monsters on the board. So for that reason... He's really good in the deck and really nice. Um, I know some people that do not like this build. Personally, from playtesting, I really like Keeper of Dragon Magic in the deck. And he's probably going to stay in there for the foreseeable future because of Master Rule 5 being a thing now and no longer being in Master Rule 4. So that's just that's my talk about this guy. Really good to help search out your fusion stuff. Uh, in addition to that, we want one a Little Blue Boy, uh, Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Little Boy Blue, as we call him, in the Spellbook-based decks, which I did a little bit while ago on this channel. Um, good card, because it's going to help search out your Spellbook engine in your deck. So mainly it's going to help you search out your Spellbook of Knowledge, uh, your Spellbook of Secrets, excuse, excuse me, and your Spellbook of Knowledge. So it's going to help out search your Secrets and your Knowledge. This is a draw engine for the deck if you're not familiar with Dark Magician, and it really helps the deck also facilitate, you know, spells into the grave, which can help out with maybe some fusion monsters, which we still run in the deck, as well as things like uh, your Dark Magician Magic Inheritance, because you can set up with a spellbook engine and just go off with Inheritance, which is a good one of in the deck. I don't know if I would run it at more than multiple like I used to back in the day, but this is your draw engine, and this helps you search it out. Just wanted to explain this deck in detail unless you're somebody getting back into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! and just wanted to build Dark Magician. Uh, next we run 3 uh, Magician Circle. This is a staple 3 of in this deck. Amazing card. It's gotten better with age because of the more and more Dark Magician support we got uh, coming out all the time. So, I mean, yeah, like, it's a staple 3 of. <laughs> helps you banish stuff, helps you get rid of stuff, helps you excavate stuff so you can get Dark Magician cards. It's really amazing of a card to have in this deck. And to say that also, guys, it does work well with a card called Servant's Soul Servant, which is an amazing card, which I'm happy I picked up back when these were cheaper. They are going up in price currently more and more each and every day. So that's why he's. It, this card helps you stack the top of your deck for your uh, magical circles, and on its own is an amazing card. 
staple three of an any dark magician deck i find i've seen people run two of it i get it but me personally three of all day um, really great cards these are pretty much your staple three of dark magician-esque cards that you run in the deck circle and soul servant um, on to you the rest of your cards we do run a lot of one ofs be it dark magician-esque cards and be it just generic one ofs but here are some of your one of dark magician cards magician uh illusion magician dark magic inheritance dark magic attack and those are the three that we run there. So some people like running different ones. Uh, I know some fun buddies of mine like running Thousand Knives still, even to this day. And I'm like, hey, knock yourself out if you want to. Um, but me personally, Dark Magic Attack is pretty much your Harpy's Feather Duster for this deck. And on top of that, it is searchable, which is great. You can just have Dark Magician out in the field and just go bam. Especially against a back row heavy deck, this will win you games. Um, Dark Magic Inheritance is really good for searching out spells. It's so easy, first turn, to have spells engraved to set up for this card. However, as time is going on and there's more cards to come out, I don't run it as multiples anymore. A lot of people cut Illusion Magic, and I've seen people do it, and then I've asked them later on, how's that working for you? And they'll say, I think I'm going to put it back in the deck as a one of. <laughs> now, this card was really great back when we really relied upon navigation to be the backbone of this deck to speed summon Dark Magician out, on, Dark Magician out into the field before Soul Servant. But it's still nice in the deck because you can recover things from Grave, uh, maybe for fusion plays, etc. There's there's multitude of ways how this card can still work around and be useful in the deck. So. At the end of the day, I still like it in the deck, and it's probably going to stay in there for the foreseeable future at this moment. Um, but I, I understand people's mental thought process of why they're not running it, though, too. Your Spellbook Engine, which we were discussing about earlier with Little Boy Blue. Uh, Spellbook Magician. Uh, we run two secrets, excuse me, two secrets and two Spellbook of Knowledge. This is your draw engine, quote unquote, for the deck. If you can, don't have all these cards and you would try and replace additional things for a Magician's Soul, maybe you want to consider a Lure of Darkness so you can turbo things out a little bit faster. But the Spellbook men, uh, engine right here, this little thing, was made for this deck. And I have never looked back after running it. So very easy to set up and search and get things going. Now let's talk about your Fusion-esque cards. Now I was mentioning, and I've mentioned a couple times in this video, we do run a... I don't want to say a heavy fusion package, but we do, the deck can go for a lot of different fusions, which is really nice. Some really powerful ones, even in the meta. Some good ones that are really situ, and then some situational ones that are very good, um, and but are not niche situations. So for that reason, that's why you see me running these different ratios of things. So let's talk about this. Eye of Tamias is very generic. It's going to help you go for a majority of your fusions. The only downside to Eye of Tamias, guys, and I will be completely honest with you here is he's not searchable that's the one thing that sucks beside that he's very good there was a one of i still like it secret of dark magic is still a good one of i know some people do not run this anymore i still like it it's one me it's been very useful and i like it um, overall so it's still staying in the deck red eyes fusion is to help to go for red eyes dragoon um, which is amazing in this deck. So Red Eyes Fusion, if you're wondering, it's kind of cute. You got Joey and Yugi, you know, in the deck like it was in Battle City when Joey had uh, when Yugi had Red Eyes in his deck before he gave it back to Joey. So Red Eyes Fusion helps you go for Red Eyes Dragoon. That's the main reason why it's in here, guys. Uh, and then Magician's Fusion is really good. This is a card that I started running when I started focusing more on heavier of a fusion variation of this deck. Uh, especially now that we're running Red Eyes Dragoon, because this can help set up for different fusions overall, be it Red Eyes Dragoon, be it other Quantet Magician, be it whatever. The, this card's really good in this deck because of now the versatility you have of being a heavier focused fusion deck. If you're not running a lot of the fusions, if you're not doing that, and you're more focused on maybe Exceeds or Links, then I wouldn't suggest this card as much. But if you're focusing just a tad bit more on the fusions, I would run it uh, because it's really useful, especially if you're focusing on a Dragoonity engine into the deck to help go for Red Eyes Dragoon. 
Um, so let's get on to the rest of the deck, guys. So we have some one of spells, which I was talking about. We got Upstart Goblin, Call by the Grave, and Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn's generic. It's amazing. You run it in this deck every day because there's so many uses you can use it for. Call by the Grave is going to help you against hand trap based decks. I'm not too much of a fan of Ash in this deck because of deck constraints, but if you can find space for Ash, maybe you cut some things out, maybe you want to run Ash. Um, Ash Blossom and Joy Springs, that is. Uh, Upstart Goblins, awesome. Makes it a 39 card deck, gives you additional draw power, and can be a spell engraved to help set some things up. Why not run it? Uh, then on to your traps, guys. We run Double Eternal Soul. I don't run Triple anymore. Um, it's, it's Times have changed. It's not as necessary as you used to. Same thing with Magician's Navigation. I still like Magician's Navigation. I just don't like it as, in multiple as much anymore. Um, now, if you don't, if you do not have Magician Souls, I would bump this up. I'm going to be completely honest with you with that. If you do not have Magician Souls, bump this baby up. Maybe you bump the Eternal Souls up. Pretty much, if you don't have Magician Souls, I'll be giving, giving different examples to this video. But the final take I'm going to say about that is double magi triple Magician's Navigation, triple Eternal Souls, if you do not have Magician Souls is how I'd run this deck. I was giving you different examples, but I wanted to get to the end of this de main deck before I talked about that. But really good trap cards for the deck, easily searchable as well. Now let's get on to the main meat and potatoes of the main de of the extra deck and talk about that because you know guys, it actually snowed here the other day uh, when I was doing some deck profiles. So I decided with you know crush card going on and all the craziness going on in this world, I'm gonna go to Duelist Kingdom. Because, from what I've heard, no one's getting crush carded in Duelist Kingdom because it wasn't around yet. So, I don't have to worry about those problems. So, I'm going to Duelist Kingdom because crush card wasn't available yet. Uh, so, yeah, that's a <laughs> my bad joke there, forgive me. But, uh, yes, guys, we got our Yugi tokens, our Duelist Kingdom tokens. Um, I love these, thing these tokens in the deck. They're just little pieces of artwork I like in the deck. But let's get on to the extra deck. We run two Red Eyes Dragoon. Definitely an amazing card. Powerful card. I know some people are probably going to say this card's broken. It shouldn't be around. Guys, it was made for this deck. It was made for this deck and Red Eyes. Like, completely. Run it. Um, then we run the one Dark Magicians, which is a really good card to run in the deck. The one Dark Magician, the Dragon Knight. The one Amulet Dragon. The one Dark Paladin. And the one Quantet Magician. So why do we run all these? Well, these one, this card's amazing. Like, we run that. That's, that's like pretty much dead giveaway. It's a broken card. Um, the Dark Magicians we run because it's a really good rate card in this deck. This will help you protect some of your, your stuff and your setup and your board. Amulet Dragon, don't discount this card. This guy can get big and win you games. Dark Paladin's amazing because they're going to help you negate stuff. And Quartet Magician is just as good as well. And it's such easy to... The ease of it to set it up in this deck is pretty good. So, that's your fusions. Now for your level 7 exceeds. We, in addition to all these bad boys here, uh, do run the one Ebon Illusion Magician. I'll move to... The one Red Eyes Flare Dragon, which is really good in this deck nowadays. And also the one Big Eye in the deck. So these are your level 7 exceeds we run. Big Eyes, awesome. Red Eyes is good. Ebonon's still good. And then your Lynx, we run one Predator Plant, Verte, Anaconda. Cerberus, Phoenix, Unicorn. Staple, pretty much extra deck package that can help you deal with, you know, back row monsters and just spinning stuff back. And also we run the one Black Luster Soldier of Chaos. You can run a rank, a level uh, 4 Link if you want to, but I don't find myself going to level 4 Links as much. But Black Luster Soldier and Unicorn are usually the main Links I'll go for when I do go for anything. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos. Thank you guys all for the support. I hope you guys are having a, have a great day rest of your year and happy new year to all of you guys and until next time take care have fun dueling believe in the heart of the cards and i'll see you guys next time good luck dueling to all of you take care everybody